Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Welcome to part two of my one year anniversary update for Amatheo's Garden, my Red Sea Reefer XL425. In this video, I'll show you the coral. I'll do my best to identify every specimen, but if you see anything you have questions about, please feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to tell you what's in here. There is a lot of stuff. I hope you enjoy it. For some of the corals that I've had for a little while, I do have video of when I first put them in the tank, but I don't have that for everything. So I'll include it where I have it, just to show you the kind of growth I've had since I started this tank. Here's my gold torch. These things are known to be finicky and sometimes hard to look after, but I think I'm seeing the development of a couple of new heads. Here's an orange tree gorgonian that I got from Gulf Coast Ecosystems after I saw an unboxing by Dave's Nanotanks. That stuff was gorgeous, so I decided I just had to have something. This is one of the things that I got. And here it is in its place in the tank. It's doing really well. I put together a couple of frags from my 20 gallon nano of this bird's nest, and it has really grown. All of the names that I'm giving you are what I was told when I bought the corals. They may not be the right names. <laughs> so if I've misidentified anything, please do leave me a comment and let me know. At one point I nearly gave up on my hammer coral, but it really started to take off. And look at it now, it's ridiculous. This devil's eye chalice was my birthday coral. I thought it was a slow grower until I compared February to July. I've been watching this coral for months. It was sold to me as a lobophilia, but when I saw the photo on the website, I was sure it was a button scolimia. I have a button scolimia and the resemblance was uncanny. However, as time has gone by, it's developed more of this classic oblong shape. And doing a bit of research, I'm now pretty sure it is a lobophilia. In any case, the colors are gorgeous on this thing, and it's doing really well. This is the Red Planet Acropora. You can see the color isn't all that great and it never has been in this tank. And recently, it has started being overcome by this kind of a gray, lichen-y, furry substance straight from the bottom up each branch. I really don't know what to make of it. The top part is still growing and actually the color's improving lately. But I guess I'll have to wait and see what happens with this one. Here's the Barnacle Project. Although the Palithoa are doing great, the Zoanthas are not. I've lost the Rastas and the Blue-Eyed Blondes, and the others are struggling. This jack-o'-lantern Leptoceros is now completely off the plug and encrusting onto the rocks. I don't know what type of chalice these two are or what their names are, but they're definitely growing and doing well. This neon encrusting Montipora is bridging the gap between the two rocks. I only know the names of a few of the Acropora that I have on this center rock structure. And here's a bit of a tour to show you some of the growth that's happened.
This pink one with green tips has STN and it's still hanging in there. This other one has an algae problem, but it's putting out new branches at the back. Apologies for the poor quality image here, but this is an experiment. This blue staghorn is in very low light near the bottom of the tank, and recently it has actually started to grow and the blue color is developing. So I have high hopes for this and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. This pink Montipora digitata is finally starting to grow. It's slow but steady. The turban area here did nothing for a very long time, but I guess it's finally happy. And shh, here's a secret. This war coral is behind the main rocks in front of the overflow. I put it here hoping that it will eventually encrust upwards and just spread out vertically on the overflow. It hasn't started to happen yet, but who knows. The Divine Mystic Red Monty you just saw came off of this piece. Here it is with the gel filter. It took a while, but it's finally encrusting. I mounted these two frags of a branching Cyphastria close together, hoping they would grow into a colony, and it looks like they're doing just that. While all that growth is going on, I do have a couple of corals that are struggling. Here are two examples. This is Gorgeous George, the Trachophilia, and this is what he looked like shortly after I got him. This is around October 2017. And here he is in July of 2018. He's not sick or anything, he's just not happy. And then we have the Ultra Rainbow Goniopora. This is what it looked like about a month after I got it, after I'd mounted it on that rock. It's looking great. Polyps are out, color is good. And here we have it today, July 2018. Pale color, no polyp extension. I'm gonna have to figure this out. I've been trying to grow zoanthids on this Tonga branch arch, but many of them just haven't survived. These blue-eyed blondes are barely hanging on. This neon green goniastria took quite a long time to actually become neon green, and it's also getting more polyps. Here we have a Looney Tunes Cyphastria, and take a look at how it's encrusting. It's looking great. The best word to describe this space invader pectinia is happy. Yeah, my bad. I put this recordia here, not realizing that this torch would immediately start attacking it. And at this point, there are only two polyps left on the recordia, and it's moved right around the rock. The season's greetings Montipora and the neighboring purple Montipora capricornis have really started to take off. My green goblin Leptoceros is really encrusting, and this is pretty amazing because there's little or no light in this spot and the toadstool is right next to it. 
Here are three different candy cane corals in my tank. They've all had various struggles, but finally seem to have turned a corner and all are doing well. Another chalice, I have no idea what it's called or what type it is, but it's a beauty and it's growing. Here's the view from the right side of the tank, looking left across the front. And this view is from the left side of the tank, looking right across the front. Neon green polyps in a sea of gold. That's what makes this Reef Tech Starburst Montipora color morph special. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my year's worth of coral collecting. Well, I guess I should say it's a little more than a year's worth because some of these came from previous tanks. But over the past year, this tank has really matured and I'm very much looking forward to the coming year to watch things start to grow. There are lots of things in here that I was not able to show you because of where they are. Uh, they're maybe not close to a glass surface, so I can't get good video, or they're under arches or behind rocks. And I think I'm gonna have to do a top down, like I promised some time ago. I finally learned how to use my cell phone floater box to take video, and uh, we'll see what I can do with it. So thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to stay following along, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you won't miss new videos.